Hello, I'm Cecile Richards, President of Planned Parenthood Federation of America. I want to be really clear. The allegation that Planned Parenthood profits in any way from tissue donation is not true. What would you expect for intact uh, tissue? What, what sort of compensation? What sort of... Well, why don't you start by telling me what you used to pay? All right. Uh, this is another video uh, that emerged uh, today. Another Planned Parenthood rep uh, bartering over how much they're going to get for their bar body parts, tissues from the baby that they abort. Bill Donahue, president of the Catholic League, Newsmax contributor, author of The Catholic Advantage. Good to see you, my friend. How you doing, Steve? Uh, you wrote a piece which was uh, pretty, pretty, um, uh, you know, apropos uh, that uh, uh, Planned Parenthood does uh, their unnecessary apology because you heard them apologize because it's basically what they do. Exactly. They want everybody to be very clinical about it. You can't be casual. As I said, that uh, that woman, that doctor spoke with the aplomb of a Nazi. See, th but that's just the way it is. I mean, we're just having, we can have a conversation about the Yankees and the Mets, and that's of no moral consequence. When you're talking about, not fetal tissue, by the way, these are body, body organs. organs. Yeah, exactly. Lungs. lungs. Yeah, they don't want to use the terminology. Yeah. Uh, when you speak that casually about that and the kind of business that they're engaged in, it didn't shock me, though. And I, and I pointed out something there. I read this as a young man back in the 1972. There was an interview with Albert Speer, one of the top lieutenants to Adolf Hitler. And, I, and when I first read it, I didn't quite get it. Now I, I get it, and I, did, I have for a long time. He said, I, the reason I could kill so many Jews is because I didn't hate them. I depersonalized them. I was indifferent to them. I remember teaching my students in classes on this. I said, if you're walking down the street and you see an ant, you don't sidestep, you just keep on walking. Right. Now, if that's a human being and you treat the human being the same way, we have a real problem right. here. That's what's going on here. This is the commodification of innocent human life, what the Pope calls a throwaway culture. And, you know, they're upset only about the tone. They're not upset about the substance. Absolutely. I mean, it was, it was extremely callous in addition to the substance, which was the worst part, but in the first video, eating the salad, drinking the wine while she's talking about this, I mean, my God. That's the danger. Uh, all right. Uh, you mentioned the Pope. Right. Um, the, the, the Democrats like Republicans to think, or like, like everyone to think, that Republicans have a Pope problem. You say it's the Democrats who have a Pope problem. That's right. I mean, this, this goes back at least to 2013 when the Washington Post started this. The New York Times had a piece yesterday, and they had another piece last month. And one after another, political, and they're all coming in line. The Republicans have a Pope problem because the Pope is liberal, it's true, on immigration, on health care, on uh, climate change, and things of that nature. But I looked at the Catholic Church's public policy positions. Well, the Catholic Church also has positions on abortion, on human cloning, on embryonic stem cell research, on euthanasia, school choice, and things of that nature. Now, the first four I just mentioned, the life issues, or what the Catholic Church regards as intrinsically evil. That term does not apply to climate change, to immigration, to, to, to all these other things that the Democrats are concerned about. Right. So now if the media were fair, they would say that the party that is most out of sync with the Catholic Church, it's including Pope Francis, party, is the yeah. Democratic Party. They want to try and box the, Bain is going to be shaking when the Pope comes in in September. He's going to wiggling around. I mean, I hope he doesn't. Uh, very quickly, this you know the uh, the climate uh, climate change uh, crowd has taken the popes as we feared, taken the popes' uh, uh, writings and, and opinion on climate change, and they've ran with it. Yeah, and that's regrettable. Uh, quite frankly, while he did say a few things about abortion and other things, which they're going to leave out, uh, there is some fodder there. So my concern is that uh, when the Pope comes in in September, that I don't want him to be demonstrably in favor of Republicans or Democrats. That's why I'm an independent. If there's a perceived tilt toward any party, and it probably would be toward the Democrats if he's going to talk about economic inequality, right. which the Democrats have done a marvelous job, by the Absolutely. way, in promoting. Absolutely. I mean, with the with low interest rates, they, the, the, nobody <laughs> see nobody is seeing greater inequality than right. under this president right. and greater poverty too. I might add. Absolutely. Well, quickly, uh, you may have a letter to the editor of the New York Times uh, addressing uh, that polygamy is next, as as you and I have talked about. And as I pointed out, and as I point out in the Times. This has been going on now I've been, for, for decades. I've dated people like State Senator Tom Duane, Amnesty International, ACLU people. I said, if Tom and Dick can get married, on what principle basis can you reject Harry? I've been told that I was crazy. It's nonsense for 20 years. 
There's an op-ed in today's New York Times by a guy who's one of the contributing writers, a law professor from Chicago, who says that is, in fact, the next step. And that is very sad. Samuel Alito alluded to that from the bench during Absolutely. the oral Absolutely, Scalia. No, this, yeah. Good to see you, my Thank friend. Thank you so much. All right, folks, uh, we're coming back. Matt Kibbe will join us. But first, Newsmax wants to send one lucky couple could be Bill Donahue and his lovely wife on a seven-day Silver Sea cruise to the Caribbean this winter. And it's a luxury cruise aboard the Silver Wind. It's a trip of a lifetime. To win, you have to enter. To enter, you go to Newsmax.com slash sweepstakes. That's Newsmax.com slash sweepstakes. Believe me, folks, it's worth it. Give it a try, and good luck.